In Module 4, we're going to cover the MX-6 calibration. Industrial Scientific Calibration Policy states that gas detection instruments are life-saving devices. Recognizing this fact, Industrial Scientific Corporation recommends that a full calibration be performed using certified concentrations of calibration gases monthly to ensure maximum accuracy. Let's look at how you calibrate the MX-6. To calibrate the MX-6 is done under the sensor drop-down. Under the sensor drop-down, by using a down arrow, we can scroll to calibrate. Pressing the on-off enter button will then start our calibration. The first screen we see appear will ask us to calibrate all sensors. By clicking the OK, it will automatically start us into the calibration sequence, pressing cancel, will abort the calibration, putting us back out to the real-time operation screen. Clicking OK will start our procedure. The first thing the instrument will do is automatically zero the sensors. During the zeroing of the sensors, it's going to take your toxics and your combustibles and set them to zero. We want to remember that whenever we zero the instrument, that once again, we do this only in clean air. If there's any contaminants in the air, that becomes part of the instrument's zero reference point and therefore could potentially skew the calibration. Upon completion of the zero, the instrument will show us a pass indication to let us know that those particular sensors have passed their zeroing. Also during the zeroing, the O2 will also show a pass because the O2 sensor actually calibrates itself to the room air during the zeroing process. The red fail indication would be our indication that that particular sensor has failed its zeroing and therefore cannot be calibrated. By pressing the on off enter button, we'll then continue with the calibration. The next screen that will appear is the instrument will actually ask for the gas concentration to be applied for that particular sensor during calibration. In this example, we see that we have to apply 100 ppm to calibrate the carbon monoxide sensor. 100 ppm is what the instrument is requesting and therefore we have to ensure that the gas concentration we're applying during calibration is indeed 100 ppm. This concentration can be found on the label of our calibration cylinder. If this concentration is different than what is actually being asked, in Module 6 we explain how you can change that concentration level to match the cylinder of gas that you'll be applying. By pressing the skip button, Pressing the skip button will skip the calibration of this one particular sensor. But pressing the abort button will actually abort and end the entire calibration. At this point, the instrument will then show the current sensor that's being calibrated. Any grayed out indication would be your indication that sensor is either pending a calibration or that sensor has passed its calibration. At the bottom of the instrument, you'll see the percentage of calibration completed. When the MX-6 completes its calibration, on the display of the instrument will be shown something known as the span reserves. This is simply the amount of sensor life left. In other words, this is an expression of the percentage of the gas that was applied during the calibration. Each of the sensor's calibrations can be classified as one of three conditions. If I have a pass indication, this would be an indication that the sensor span reserve is greater than 70% of the applied calibration gas. In other words, if I applied 100 ppm of carbon monoxide in this example, anything higher than 70 ppm would be an indication that that sensor's calibration is a pass. A marginal calibration will be expressed on the instrument's display as a yellow indication. This would be a sensor whose span reserve is between 50 to 70 percent of the applied calibration gas. Once again, if 100 ppm was the concentration I applied, but yet the sensor was showing an indication of a full span between 50 and 70 percent, that would be indicated on the instrument display as a marginal. The last would be my fail indication. This would indicate that a sensor has failed the calibration it was a sensor that couldn't even see half of the gas that was applied. Fortunately, as a user, you'll never have to determine if a sensor fails calibration. 
If a sensor does fail calibration, the instrument will fail it for you automatically. You'll know that because back in the real-time operation screen, where that sensor reading once was will now show the word in red, fail. Now the pass indication actually shows us that the sensor is strong and should provide accurate readings. This sensor does not need replaced. It can stay in the instrument and continue operating with great confidence. The marginal would be our indication that that sensor has only marginal sensitivity. Although the sensor does have marginal sensitivity, it should still provide accurate readings, but it would be our indication that that sensor has come down to its little warning track to let us know that it's coming due to be changed and should be changed soon. But the fail indication would be our indication that sensor has failed the calibration and must be replaced prior to use. So let's go ahead and look at a video of the MX-6 calibration. As you'll see here, by scrolling over to sensors and using the drop down, we can drop down to calibrate. Pressing the on off enter starts that calibration process. Clicking OK will continue the process with first zeroing the instrument. Once again, at this point, toxic and combustible sensors being set to zero. Upon completing of the zeroing of the toxic and the combustible, the next up would be your O2 calibration. Once again, we want to ensure that when we're zeroing, that we zero only in clean air. Any contaminants in the air will become part of the instrument zero reference point and will actually skew our calibration. So at this point, we see that the O2 sensor is calibrating to the room air, showing a full span of 31.3. We'll look at that indication upon completion of the calibration at which time it shows that our zeroing has passed, clicking OK then prompts us to apply our first calibration gas. Utilizing the calibration adapter, putting that over top of the instrument, and starting our gas flow, we want to ensure that at this point we are flowing what the concentration that the instrument is asking for. At this point, the instrument is asking for 25 ppm, ppm of H2S. I want to ensure that the concentration I'm applying is indeed 25 ppm because the instrument is going to be basing its calibration on that 25 ppm that I'm applying. At this point, the H2S sensor is starting to respond to the gas and we're starting to see a full span indication appear on the display for that H2S. With a full span of 47.3, we're looking at the fact that at the end of the calibration, the instrument will then show us the status of that sensor. If I didn't have any indication at this point, it would be my indication that the sensor has, is not detecting the gas. That would be an indication that, that that particular sensor may fail the calibration. Upon completion of the H2S, the next sensor that comes up is 100 ppm of carbon monoxide. With applying 100 ppm of carbon monoxide, the CO sensor is now calibrating to that 100 ppm. You'll also notice on the display of the instrument, grayed out, are the two previous sensors that have calibrated. The O2 sensor, you'll notice, has the word skipped. That skipped would be an indication that the O2 sensor calibrated while it was zeroing. Now the LEL sensor is calibrating. With the LEL sensor, it asks for 25% LEL pentane to be applied, at which time that's what we're applying. Now that we see the reading is going up, indicating that the LEL sensor is also calibrating to the gas cylinder. Upon completion, it'll show us that our zeroing and our calibration has all passed. Remember, O2 shows skipped because the O2 sensor calibrated while the instrument was zeroing. And that is the calibration of the MX-6. If I'm calibrating my MX-6 with its optional sampling pump, there's two different ways that I can deliver the gas to the instrument. One way, and pictured on the left, is a calibration cylinder with a demand flow regulator. The demand flow regulator will allow gas to be flown to the instrument at a rate at which the pump pulls the gas. So the pump will actually pull the gas automatically through that regulator and delivering that to the instrument. Pictured to the right 
is using the calibration cylinder with a standard regulator. Remember the regulator is, draw, is allowing gas to flow at about a half liter, maybe a liter per minute, depending on how it's been configured. But the instrument is going to be drawing gas at a quarter liter per minute. Therefore, with the optional T-fitting employed, it allowed the excess gas to bleed out through the open T, allowing the instrument to pull only the concentration of gas that it needs. Always remember, though, since the sampling pump is pulling gas at a quarter liter per minute, that we want to be ensuring that we're flowing the gas at greater than that concentration so that this excess gas bleeds out to the T rather than pulling fresh air in through the T. Now that we have covered the complete calibration of the instrument, there is a way in which we can work with each sensor individually. This is done under the sensor drop-down. If we use the down arrow to scroll to sensors, pressing the on-off enter button will then display all the sensors that are currently installed in our instrument. By selecting one of these sensors, we now have another drop-down that's going to give us five different options. The first option that we see here is zero. If I select zero, it allows me to zero just that one particular sensor. If I select cal, now I could actually calibrate just that one selected sensor. Bump test allows me to just bump test that one individual sensor. Whereas cal date allows me to display either the last or the next calibration date of just that sensor. But the last one is span trends. What span trends does is it allows me to graphically show the spans of that particular sensor over time. On the display of the instrument will once again graphically show the degradation of that sensor from all its previous calibrations. If I have the optional PID sensor installed in my instrument, an extra drop-down will be made available after span trends, which is response factor. What response factor allows me to do is to select the response factor from the onboard library. This onboard library is going to have well over a hundred different response factors available for me to select. By using my up and down arrow, I can scroll through the different PID response factors. Once one is selected, pressing OK will bring up the next screen. The instrument will then show me the gas type. So as you'll see in this example, hexane was selected as the gas type. The 6.23 response factor that you see here is a multiplier that will be applied to the PID sensor when calibrated to isobutylene. This will raise the accuracy of that sensor so it will be able to read the hexane in the environment accurately. If I have an LEL sensor installed in my instrument, there will be two other options that I'll see underneath the drop-down underneath span trends. The first one we'll look at is correlation factors. What correlation factors allows me to do is to bring up a correlation factor from the onboard instrument library. Through this, I'm able then to select a particular type of combustible gas that I'm trying to detect with my LEL sensor. By scrolling through the list, I can select that particular sensor. Clicking the OK will then allow me to choose that as a correlation factor for my combustible sensor. The next screen it'll appear is it's first going to show me the calibration gas that it was calibrated to. Right here it shows me that my instrument was calibrated with methane, but the next one up shows the sampled gas that I selected as propane. With propane selected, a correlation factor will also then be displayed on the instrument of 1.6. This correlation factor is a multiplier. Just because I calibrate the methane doesn't mean I'm going to be able to detect all combustible gases the same. Because remember, combustible gases are different. They have different vapor pressures, different molecular weights. Therefore, how they respond on the combustible sensor is different.
If I calibrate the methane, the only gas I'll be able to accurately detect is methane. But if there's propane in my environment, I may want to select up propane as my response factor. Therefore, it's going to take that 1.6 multiplier and I'll always apply that to my combustible gas reading as if it is propane gas. Just because I select up a correlation factor for propane doesn't mean it's only going to detect propane. The combustible sensor can detect any and all combustible gases, and therefore, if there is a mixture of combustible gases in my environment, I would not want to use up a LEL correlation factor. Rather, I would want to use it as a direct CALD instrument. The last option that would be available on that drop-down would be something called units. Units applies to my LEL sensor and what this allows me to do is now to detect combustible gases in 10 part per million increments. This is particularly useful if, for example, I'm using this in arson investigation, looking for trace accelerants in the fire. Maybe the combustible gas reading would not show up in LEL, but may show up as a PPM if the concentration is very, very low. Same thing with leak detection. If I'm looking for a leak around a natural gas valve or flange, and I'm trying to isolate where that leak is, by choosing up units as my unit of measurement, I now have much greater resolution for my combustible sensor. And the last option we could see on a drop down of sensor is something called locations. What location does, it shows me the location of my installed sensors. So if I'm curious as to exactly what sensors I have installed and the location that they're installed in, this could be a useful screen to show.